Welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. Today we're in Exodus chapter 2 for one of the most beloved stories of this book. I'm going to show you a few things that you may not have seen before. When Moses' mother gives birth to him in verse 2, we're told that she saw that he was a fine child. And translators have tried to render this in different ways. Commentators talk about this in different ways. Um, later biblical interpreters reflect back on this. What was it that made Moses so beautiful? I think what's going on here is a clear connection to Genesis chapter 1. When God created all things and after each thing that he created, he saw that it was good. Kitov. And here Moses' mother looks at him and she sees Kitovhu, that he is good. And I think we're supposed to see this in light of God's creative work in Genesis. Moses' mother is fulfilling the creation mandate to fill the earth and subdue it. She's given birth to a son. And because all things that God created are good, she looks at him and sees that he's good. And she knows it would be ridiculous, it would be horrible to throw this child into the Nile River as Pharaoh has mandated in chapter 1. And so she doesn't. She devises a plan. We're told that she hides him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she gets a papyrus basket and coats it with tar and pitch. Now, this is not the normal word for basket. And it probably was a basket because it was made out of papyrus. The Hebrew word used to describe this vessel that she puts him in is the word teba. The word teba only occurs in one other passage in the Hebrew Bible, and that's in Genesis 6, when God tells Noah to build a teba and cover it with pitch and fill it with animals. Yes, we're talking about the ark. So just as God used an ark to spare Noah from a watery death, now Moses' mother chooses to make a little ark and put her son in it to spare him from a watery death. So we are supposed to be thinking of Genesis as we read Exodus chapter 2. Moses' mother has already twice reminded us of the Genesis story. Now, the thing that she coats the basket with is hamar, which sounds just like the word used in um, Exodus chapter 1 verse 14 for the substance, the tar substance, that the Israelites are use, using as mortar for their brick-making projects. So there it's chomer, here it's chemar, so chemar, chomer. It's the same consonants in Hebrew, different vowels. So again, looking back, and it's maybe implying that she's using resources available to her to save the life of her son. But then she takes the ark, the little ark with her son in it, and she places it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. The word for reeds in Hebrew is suf, and if we don't know that, then we might miss a resonance that's later in the story. The, when the Israelites flee from Pharaoh and leave Egypt, they cross the Red Sea. We, our English translations call it the Red Sea, but the Hebrew Bible never calls it the Red Sea. It is always referred to as the Sea of Reeds, Yam Suf. So Moses' mother puts him in an ark, reminding us of Noah, and then puts the ark among the reeds, reminding us or anticipating what's about to happen to the entire nation. Moses is, is in his own life reliving the story of God's deliverance from judgment and anticipating the story of God's deliverance from Pharaoh by escaping a watery death through the sea of reeds, in this case the river, the reeds of the river is where he's kept safe. Now another interesting thing about Exodus chapter 2, at this point in the story, Moses' mother is not named and Moses is not named. It's just a mother and her boy son that we're told about. Now the anonymity of these two characters has a significance, I think, in two different ways. I, I think both of these things could be true at once. One, she's in a position where she's hiding from Pharaoh and she is disobeying the royal edict to kill her own son. And so there's almost like a tiptoeing effect, like she doesn't, 
the, the narrator doesn't want to reveal her name or the name of her son because their lives are hanging in the balance. If either of them are discovered, they could die. And so there's almost like a whispering. This is the narrator's way of whispering this story by not saying their names out loud to try to protect their identities. But I think also it's anonymous so that we can then begin to see it as the beginning story of the whole nation of Israel. Every mother who gives birth to a boy is looking at him and seeing that he's good and feeling that he should not be destroyed. And every mother is wrestling with how to respond. And so Moses' own mother acts in solidarity with all these women as she tries to save the life of her son. And as we'll see, God is going to save the life of the entire nation in similar ways in just a few chapters. So that's all I want to share with you today. We're out of time. If you're watching this because a friend shared it with you. Thank your friend for being a rock star. And if you could take a moment and um, on the just below this video over here down on the bottom right, bottom right, there's a little thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you'd like below. I love interacting with, with you. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. That will make sure you don't miss any episodes. We'll see you again next week for another Torah Tuesday.